Greetings in the name of Christ and welcome to worship. Russ, I'm not sure if you're out there watching today, but hey, I've got your shirt on. Well, actually, it's my shirt, but I know you have the same shirt. So hope you're watching from Arizona. Welcome, everybody. In preparing for um, today's uh, welcome, I was thinking about my compliment because we had a lesson on, um, on um, ministry. And it said in this lesson, in, in baptism, we are called to ministry in the name of Christ. And it said that ministry is to serve. Well, we are all called as ministers, servants of God and servants of others. May this worship guide us in this ministry as we pray, sing, and hear the word of God. Hope it prepares us for this coming week so that we can serve others. Yeah, and like always, let's begin with song. morning. I'm here to do the call to worship, but I have a few personal things to say before. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was rather depressed because we have been suffering under this long uh, COVID uh, pandemic, and then I witnessed uh, an attack on our U.S. Capitol, which I have visited about four times, and it was quite disappointing. But this week, I'm, I feel much better. Um, there was a beautiful inauguration on Wednesday. I think the highlights of it were the uh, uh, youth poet, uh, Amanda Gordon, and uh, the beautiful firework display around the uh, Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Memorial last evening. And just about an hour ago, I received my first uh, Pfizer vaccine, and I will receive the next one on February 21st. So the future looks very bright, and I hope all of you, the rest of you, can join me in this uh, practice so that we can all get back to a normal life. But here is the call to worship. It is time to become focused not on our wants or complaints, but on God. In the silent places of my soul, I turn to God, for God alone is our rock and salvation. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the good news of God, saying the time had come, the realm of God is at hand. 
The realm of God is not very far from any one of us. For in God we live and move and have our being. Jesus said, repent and believe the good news. And please join me in our opening prayer. O God, you are our light and our salvation. Living in your presence, we have nothing to fear. Open our hearts to your word this day. Make us to f ready to follow Jesus on whatever path he leads us. Cast aside our fears and doubts and teach us to trust wholly in you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Story of all ages, when God made you. This story is... Uh, book. The story book is actually from Beth. She gave it to me. She'd bought it because it reminded her of her daughters. It's a sweet little story, one of those rhymy stories that I like to share with you guys occasionally. Um, I hope that the story inspires you to just show you how unique we all are in the gifts that we have. I, I think you'll like it. When God Made You. Oh, it was by uh, Matthew Paul Turner, is the author. When God Made You. You, you, God made you. God made you shiny and new. And incredibly you, a you all your own. A you unlike anyone else has ever known. Kind of reminds me of Dottie a little bit. An exclusive design one God refined. You're perfectly crafted one of a kind. Because when God made you, somehow God knew that the world needed someone exactly like you. You, you. God thinks about you. God was thinking of you long before your debut. <laughs> like that, long before your debut. From the very beginning, amid history and time, you, little one, never left God's mind. God imagined your eyes, your head's shape and size. He knew what you'd look like when you felt surprised. God pictured your nose and your ten little toes. The sound of your voice, God had it composed. The lines on your hands, your hair, every strand. God knew every detail like it was all planned. Out of billions of faces from cultures, all races, people God made from all different places. God knew your name, your picture was framed. God's family without you would not be the same. Oh, there's Letty. Because <laughs> when God made you, this much is true, the world got to meet who God already knew. Look at all those people. You, you, when God sees you, God delights in what is and sees only what's true. That you, yes you, in all of your glory, bring color and rhythm and rhyme to God's story. Oh. So be you, fully you, a show-stopping review. Live your life in full color, every tint, every hue. Discover, explore, have faith, but love more. And learn and relearn all that God has made for you. Use your talents and passions, those gifts that God fashioned. Think up ideas and then put them into action. Because God loves you creating, your true self displaying. When light on the inside through art is portraying, when you make believe the stories conceived, the heroines, the magic, those tricks up your sleeves. When you dance alone, spinning like a cyclone, 
being whoever, whatever, the world is all your own. God smiles, and here's why. In the spark of your eye, a familiar reflection shines bright from inside. Because when God made you and the world wooed and awed, in heaven they called you an image of God. You, you, when God dreams about you, God dreams about all that in you will be true. That you, God's you, will be hopeful and kind, a giver who lives with all heart, soul, and mind. I love the colors here. Wow. A dreamer who dreams in big and small themes. One who keeps dreaming in journeys upstream. A mover, a shaker, a lover of nature. A builder of bridges, you, the peacemaker. A you who views others as sisters and brothers and lives by three words, love one another. A confident you, strong and brave too. You being you is God's dream coming true. They go. Because when God made you, all of heaven was beaming over you. God was smiling and already dreaming. When God made you, blessings, amen. I don't often introduce my songs when I do special music. Some of you might wonder how I pick my special music, or maybe not. But I'm often somehow inspired in the weeks leading up to the date that I'm scheduled to sing. With what happened at the Capitol on January 6th, as well as Martin Luther King Day and the inauguration of this past week, like you, I've been both saddened and moved. This song, Wounded World That Cries for Healing, is in our black hymnal, number 2177. I found the words inspirational, and I hope you do too. Common cool. 
Bible lesson for this morning comes from the Old Testament book of the prophet Jonah. We're reading from chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Here are these words as I read them to you. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock, shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. Here ends the reading from God's holy word. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditation to the hearts of each of these, your people, be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A Sunday school class was studying the story of Jonah and the whale. The teacher asked the students what they learned from the story, and one little boy answered, people make whales sick. Do you remember the story of Jonah? As that book opens, God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach against it and its wickedness. Now, Nineveh, is the capital of the Assyrian Empire, a long time powerful enemy of the Jewish people. And Jonah wants nothing to do with this commission. He hates Ninevites, and so he runs away. Jonah gets on a ship headed west on the Mediterranean Sea, heading towards Tarshish, Literally the farthest reaches of the known world, what we are now call Spain. There was a terrible storm. And to calm the sea during that terrible storm, the ship's crew cast Jonah into the water, where a great fish swallows him. Jonah languishes in the fish's stomach for three days, praying for help. And God causes the great fish to vomit Jonah up onto a beach. Here is where we come to this morning's Bible lesson. A second time, God commands Jonah to go and preach to the people of Nineveh. Without enthusiasm, Jonah finally does so. Now, Nineveh is a great city. It's a metropolis. It would take three days to cross on foot from one side to the other. Jonah goes only about a third of the way into the city. 
and he gives one of the shortest, yet most effective sermons ever. He quietly calls out, just 40 more days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites come to believe in the one true Lord God. And the people mourn their sins. They repent of their evil and their violence. Nineveh's repentance pleases God, who chooses not to destroy Nineveh after all. God's change of heart grieves and angers Jonah, who goes off to sulk. At the end of the book, God scolds Jonah. Can't I pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 people who can't tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? Jonah's story tells us a good bit more than just that people make whales sick. We learn from this story a great deal about repentance. It's like the, the four-year-old who constructed his prayer after what he thought he heard in church during the Lord's Prayer. And forgive us our trash baskets, as we forgive those who put trash in our baskets. We all have trash in our baskets. It's how we deal with that trash that matters. And the book of Jonah talks about trash baskets and repentance on at least three levels. First, of course, the book of Jonah is about the prophet Jonah. He hated Ninevites. He wanted God to destroy the Ninevites. They were Jonah's sworn enemies. That's why Jonah ran away. Not only did he want nothing to do with Ninevites, he really wanted nothing to do with their salvation from the death and the destruction they deserved. But what is sin besides the refusal to do God's will? Jonah sinned repeatedly by running away from doing God's will. This book is about Jonah's sin and repentance. When, when we think of repentance, we usually think in, think in terms of, of quitting something sinful. In reality, many of us are more like the old lady who said she ain't been doing nothing and she was going to quit that too. We need to repent of doing nothing and instead start doing something for God and the people God wants to save. The second level of our Bible story has to do with the repentance of the Ninevites. They were some sorry people who realized they had much about which to repent. Now, sure, they were scared into it. At least they also were shocked into seeing that their way of life was displeasing to God. Not everyone gets that. Nazi war criminal Rudolf Hess, deputy Führer to Adolf Hitler, should be remembered for one thing. He never repented. Involved in some of the most atrocious acts ever committed by human beings, Hess never felt remorse. At the Nuremberg war crime trials, Rudolf Hess made this public statement. I was allowed for many years of my life to work under the greatest sun that my people produced in their 1,000 year history. Even if I could, I would not want to erase this. I am happy to know that I have done my duty to my people as a loyal follower of my fewer. I regret nothing. If I were to be begin again, I would act just as I have acted, 
even if I knew that in the end I should meet a fiery death at the stake. No matter what men may do to me someday, I shall stand before the judgment seat of the Eternal. I shall answer to him, and I know that he will judge me innocent. That is an example of how not to repent. Some say that Rudolf Hess was insane. But isn't one definition of insanity to be shown the reality of our sin and yet we refuse to repent? Our fallen human nature screams out to us in pride and self-righteousness, don't repent. You have no need to. The Ninevites repented. And that leads us to look at the third level of repentance in this story. God's repentance. Now we don't think of God repenting. Yet because God is absolutely loving, just, and sovereign, God might well change the direction of what God is doing. God changed God's mind over what would happen to Nineveh because of God's eternal and absolute love and compassion for human beings, even sinful human beings. Though God was ready to permit, permit death and destruction to overwhelm the Ninevites because of their evil, God was also concerned about their lives. God wanted to save those lives. When the people of Nineveh repented, that opened the way for God to repent of the sentence he had spoken against them. There is an old Hebrew legend about an angel who was disobedient but who pleaded for mercy from God. God said to that angel, I shall not punish you. However, in atonement, you must bring back from earth the most precious thing in the world. And so the angel began the search. He found a soldier dying of wounds received defending his country from an invader. The angel caught the last drop of blood and brought it back. God said the courage of those who give their life is precious but not the most precious thing in the world. The angel resumed the quest. Wearily he roamed the earth until he came upon a nurse dying of a disease that she had caught while nursing a child back to health. God said the selfless devotion of those who save the life of a child is very precious but it also is not the most precious thing on earth. The angel continued to wander. One day he saw a farmer preparing to kill a man who was stealing his cattle. The farmer, axe ready, stood at the window of the thief's cottage, watching as the thief kissed his children goodnight and tucked them into bed. At that moment, the would-be killer remembered his own children and lowered his axe. He shuddered to think that he had been on the verge of destroying the happiness of this home, and a tear rolled down his cheek. The angel caught that tear and brought it back to God. God accepted the tear with rejoicing. God smiled and said, You are fully pardoned, for there is nothing more precious than a tear of repentance. Of what do you need to repent? Let us now approach God in prayer. And let us do so first by having a time of silence, each one of us lifting up the prayers of our hearts as we think about 
those around us, those in need, and indeed as we think of ourselves. So let us pray for a moment in silence. God of mercy and grace, you have spoken in voices loud and small. Listen to us now, not to the deserving of our voices, but to the yearning of our hearts. We pray for the church, O oh God. Give us grace to claim the goodness that the church has been in days past, even as we struggle to meet the challenges of our time. Grant us wisdom to be your servants in our increasingly complex world. We dream of being a voice for truth, a place of justice, a balm of healing, a sanctuary of mercy, a people of nurture among whom children are seen as signs of your kingdom, among whom noble ideals are fostered in the days of youth, among whom faithfulness is encouraged among adults, and among whom the wisdom of long years is cherished. Come, Holy Spirit, move among us that in these days when it is not so easy to be your church, we might indeed be your brave and faithful people. Not for the church alone, O God, but for the world we also pray we pray for our leaders may they deliberate long enough to discern and do your will fill them with grace and strength as they seek your wisdom and in matters that divide persons of good will give patience understanding and direction we find all around us people who are afraid, people who are angry, but also we see signs of goodwill and hope. Bring this community to be a place of security and fairness for all its residents. We see in the world people whose lives are shattered by war, by famine, by political turmoil, by oppression. We see people whose lives are wracked with pain and disease, and those whose lives are disturbed and endangered by the pandemic. And yet we also see signs of peace and plenty and healing. Restore this good earth to a place of peace and goodwill among all people. Here now also our prayers for those who grieve, for those who are anxious, for those who are lonely, for those who are tired, for those who are confused, for those who are addicted, for those who are guilty. Give us grace to be answers to these prayers we make. We pray all this and more in the name of Jesus Christ, and we pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please keep the following people in your prayers this week. Betty, Jan, Bob and Gwen, Nels, Judy, Nancy, Baby Eli, Baby Addison, Anne, Howard, Jean, and Jerry, Karen and family, and Mitch, Britt, and their unborn baby girl. 
This week we celebrate with the following people. Happy birthday to Broden, Abby, and Holly. And as always, your offerings can continue to be given by dropping them off at the church office with Beth, Monday through Friday between the hours of 8 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. You can mail them directly to the church at 885 Pembina Trail, or you can give online through our website at dlumc.org. We thank you for your continued financial support. Help us accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us and bring us to believe. We are ourselves accepted and meant to love and live. Teach us, O oh Lord, your lessons as in our daily life so we struggle to Your acceptance change us so that we may be moved in living situations to do the truth in love, to practice your acceptance until we know by heart the table of forgiveness and laughter's healing art. Lord, for today's with all who are in need, who hunger for acceptance, for righteousness and bread. We need new eyes for seeing, the hands for holding on. Renew us with your spirit, Lord, free us, make us one. Please join me now in the words of our benediction. Who are we? We are a missionary force of Christians. What do we do? Offer the care and compassion of Christ. To whom? To all. Where do we meet you? Wherever you are on life's journey. Go in peace. <laughs>